Today we're diving into the essential steps for ostomy marking. We're breaking ostomy placement down into three fundamental steps. First, ensure the ostomy passes through the rectus abdominis muscle. Transrectus ostomies have a lower risk of peristomal hernias. You can use the nipple line as a guide for the lateral border of the rectus muscle. Placing the ostomy medial to this line will help maintain proper positioning within the muscle. Second, select a site with at least a five centimeter circumferential area free of skin folds and wounds. A flat surface is crucial for securing the ostomy appliance effectively to the abdominal wall. Third, we will combine the first two rules and observe how the patient's abdominal wall changes as they move. The ostomy site must support the appliance through various daily activities, ensuring a secure and comfortable fit. Now let's practice these skills on a standardized patient. We begin with our patient seated, abdomen exposed, and start with observation. Noticing the skin folds, we see some narrow folds in the upper abdomen and asymmetric folds in the lower abdomen. On the patient's right side, the skin fold sits higher than on the left, which is an important consideration when selecting the optimal ostomy site. Our first step is ensuring the ostomy passes through the rectus abdominis muscle. I've marked the nipple lines to help identify the rectus muscle. Remember, the ostomy should be placed medial to these lines for optimal positioning. Next, we need to identify a five centimeter circumferential area with minimal skin folds to ensure a secure fit for the ostomy appliance. A pro tip is to use the back of a two-piece ostomy appliance for measurement. This allows you to see exactly how the appliance will sit on the abdominal wall. Move it around the abdomen to test different areas for the best placement. Once you've identified potential sites, you can start marking with a skin marker. For this patient, we've identified two potential ostomy sites. Now let's move on to step three and have the patient change positions to confirm that these sites remain appropriate during different movements. As the patient moves into different positions, you can see how the contour of the abdominal wall changes. On the left, when the patient is lying flat, the skin folds tend to flatten, creating the illusion of more space between them. This can be deceiving, especially in the operating room, highlighting why preoperative marking is crucial whenever possible. On the right-hand side, you can see the markings with the patient sitting and standing. The markings appear suitable for both sitting and lying flat. However, when the patient stands, the marking on the right side shifts downward. Now it's too close to a skin fold and nearing the patient's belt line and leg, both of which can cause issues with pouching. If these markings were to be used, the right side would need to be adjusted. Now there are some situations that can make ostomy marking extra challenging. We've compiled a list of our best tips and tricks to help you navigate these situations with confidence. We hope this information comes in handy next time you need to mark for an ostomy. Thanks for watching.